First of all, I wonder, have any of you heard of this? It's the RC-135 rivet joint. You heard about this before? I have not. Well, <clears throat> you know how the pride of Canada is the Aurora? Yes. You know, the Aurora is just incredible. Yep. This is kind of similar to the Aurora, but it's the American thing. Oh, okay. The okay. rivet joint. It's an interesting name. That's just like a it's variant. Kind of a shit name. <laughs> it is. It's a pretty shit name. Should we call it the Cobra Strike? There's one called the Cobra Eye. Oh, well, there we go. It's just a variant of the RC-135, which is this Boeing thing. I believe it's Boeing. If I'm wrong, don't crucify me. But anyway, it's a reconnaissance plane. So it doesn't hold the candle to the Aurora. No, 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 no. no. Probably doesn't even have CRT monitors. Probably doesn't. It's probably like got ticker tape, you know, yeah. something like yeah. that. Anyway, this thing that was built in the 60s, uh, designed in the 60s, I should say, has been completely retrofitted with advanced radar and stuff. Oh, so it's, this is Lehi really Lehigh. It's, really it's powerful. Yeah, it's very good for reconnaissance. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. So this thing is knocking about mm -hmm. flying around in the South China Sea in international airspace. Hmm. The okay. rivet joint. Yeah. This one doesn't get a French kiss, right? Nah. No. Nah, no. Nah. I don't know what we give this one, but it's not just, even a chef's kiss. It's no, nah, it's okay. not not that great. It doesn't okay. get a French kiss or a chef's kiss. <laughs> Gets none of that stuff. Yeah. What if it's a French chef? I'm not kissing him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it gets a French chef's kiss. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's got a classy, classy chef's kiss. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's flying around, knocking about in the South China Sea. Now, for those of you who don't know, China claims areas of, well, areas that don't belong to it. China claims the world yeah. at this point. So in the South China Sea, um, it has been for the longest time for, well, a, a huge chunk of history now, there's been a designated area that's international waters and international airspace. And it's vital for trade in the area. Sure. Okay? Think about all the countries that are close by there, right? Yeah. Uh, Vietnam and, you know, the rest of the, the bunch down Philippines. there. Philippines. and Yeah, there's a lot of countries in that area. Mm -hmm. A lot. Okay. And they all rely on this South China Sea for, like, shipping and, you know, fishing. What? and. Is there a shipping hub in the China's <laughs> northeast? Oh, you mean this one? <laughs> Port of Dandong. Sorry, this is yeah, a yeah, exactly. Segue. Go ahead. Um, anyway, so in order for this trade and globalization and all the rest of it to continue <laughs> to work, is that you, like a center for that? Yeah, there is a center for China and globalization. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but anyway, in order for this to work, these shipping routes and so on have to remain open and free. Yeah. And the U.S. does these freedom of movement exercises every once in a while where it will send a ship or whatever through yeah. these waters because they're international waters. Now, sometime in the last like three to two decades, I'd say, China decided that they just own that area. OK, and they dug up a ancient map, which they drew some lines and the nine dash line. They're like, that belongs to us. Look, this old map proves it. Which, by the way, is a bunch of bullshit, because then England can pull out a map from like 100 years ago and say, guess what? We own you. We own everyone. We own the whole world. I mean, an old map doesn't give legitimacy. It doesn't. Old governments, old regimes, they're gone. You know? So like Live the British the Empire. Yeah, like the British Empire could prove that, oh, look at this old map. We, yes. we own literally the whole world. True. Nobody would be like, okay, we agree with you. You know? Yeah. If the Queen's ghost came out with that map or something, no. Queen's may, ghost. maybe then, you know, put her, put her away. <laughs> anyway, the fact of the matter, like Prince Charles or something, he's like, look at this oh, map. Now we own like Africa and we own everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't work that way. But in China, they think it does. The Chinese government. So this area is kind of like a contested area. But only China really contests it. The rest of the world's like, no, it's just international space as it always has been. And these trade routes need to say, stay open and safe. So this rivet joint, okay, is basically just flying around doing reconnaissance in the international airspace. As you do. As you do, because you're keeping the trade routes safe, you know? Yeah. And this is what happened. Okay? Uh, a plan, okay, which means People's Liberation Army yeah. Navy, yeah. by the way. It's not, they don't have a plan. No. Okay. No. Uh, a J-11 um, intercepted this um, this wonderful aircraft. In international airspace. Yeah. Would it surprise you that the J-11 is an Su-27 <laughs> variant? Not at all. So it's a Russian Sukhoi um, Su-27 that's, yeah. I guess, been uh, upgraded. Mm. 
or change to China's specifications. It's a licensed build of the thing. Mm. It's not an original thing, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So it came in there, and it's flying really close, as you can see. Okay? It just wants to say hi. But then it starts drifting closer and closer. This is out of the cockpit of this, um, this beautiful big rivet joint. And you can see it gets so close that they actually had to drop um, and maneuver away. The, the, the rivet joint had to move. Yeah. And that's because it was an un unsafe maneuver. The plane could have collided. Yes. And you know what? Within 10 feet, I believe, right? Yeah, it's yeah. super close. And that's incredibly irresponsible. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what this happened? The act of war. Yeah. So, and this is what was happening with those auroras as well. Yeah. Remember? Scrambling them. Yeah, and they were just also... But you know what? In 2001, mm. you, you hear about the Hainan incident? Yeah, I know well about that. Similar story. Yeah. Except that time, the Chinese plane crashed into the reconnaissance yeah. aircraft, and then the pilot died. Yeah. And then whoever was on the reconnaissance aircraft managed to land safely in Hainan Island, caused a big diplomatic thing. Huge. No one died there. No. It was a big deal, though. It was huge. Yeah. It was a big diplomatic spat. Anyway, this is, again, completely irresponsible garbage from the chinese uh you know navy over here yeah what are they doing why do they have to harass these uh reconnaissance aircraft international in, waters in, well or international airs. airspace yeah. we have another uh, situation about international waters later because it turns out they do the exact same oh they thing. do the same thing yeah. in international waters but they're just harassing you know people are flying in international airspace and they're like oh we're just gonna go do an unsafe maneuver this is close as close as you get to an act of war yeah, the problem is, is this is what happens when the PLA mm -hmm. doesn't have a plan, no mm -hmm. pun intended, mm -hmm. and the leadership has constantly stoked you with the fact that we are the dominate, dominant power of the world mm -hmm. and no one belongs here except for us when the international law doesn't dictate that at all. No. They don't get to hear the international perspective, no. right? They get to hear the God in chief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the problem. Do you guys know why your economy is doing well? It's because shipping goes through yes. that area and that's how it works. You know why you can afford that plane yeah. that you built there, that you licensed from Russia, <laughs> that you couldn't make by yourself? Do you know how you can afford that? It's because of the shipping that's going through there and all the trade you're doing with the world. Yeah. Why are you trying to mess that up? Because uh, they want to own the shipping routes. Yeah, they want to own them. They want everyone to pay tribute. They want everyone yeah. to act like China is an empire Yeah. and you have to kowtow to the emperor. So let's talk about Top Gun. Okay, yeah. you know, we know Top Gun. Bottom uh, Gun. Yeah, Bottom Gun over here. Uh, Top Gun Maverick was coming out, okay? And everyone knew it was going to be at least fairly successful. So China decided that they were going to make their own mm -hmm. Top Gun knockoff. Mm -hmm. And it's just a Top Gun knockoff, okay? There's no reason for them to release it other than because they know it would do well. And they knew it would be a very good... It was supposed to be a showcase of the new J-20 sort of stealth fighter mm. um you know the, from the people's liberation army air force the plan the plan no this is no, the, the plan yeah, not the yeah the this plan. Is plan sorry the plan 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 yeah exactly <laughs> so <laughs> the plan and the and uh you know the the ccp were like hey this is a great opportunity to do some propaganda hard power <laughs> and they dumped oh my god billions into this oh movie okay god. it's super high budget yeah okay and this is the Global Times, which is, you know, the Chinese state mouthpiece. It's in a English. state media, English. And they were like, new Chinese film, Born to Fly, to show dedication, rigorous training of Chinese PLA Air Force test pilots. Just if you, some for some reason, thought China's Top Gun knockoff was independent of the government. No, no, it's 100%. Yes. You know, it's government endorsed. and It's propaganda. It was also, here's, here's something that a lot of people don't seem to understand about the way the Chinese film industry works. This was to be released uh, mm. just just when the National uh, Day holiday yes. um, came about. Now, National Day holiday is a huge patriotic thing, and you get like a week off. Yeah. Okay? That's right. So this was going to be released on the day of the National Day holiday. And right. during the National Day holiday, it is actually pretty much mandatory to go off and watch uh, nationalist films and things like that. It's what you do. You Your mm. school organizes it. Your company organizes it. It's your... like five-year-olds will go watch a movie about like 
Japanese people beheading people. I mean, yeah, we we saw that recently with that uh, the Battle of the Yalu River or whatever it's called, Chung Chung, some, whatever Lake you know Chung that. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's what I'm talking about. You know that like whole North Korea yeah. thing, where they somehow glamorized the fact that they were horribly like defeated. Beaten. Yeah, in the, in lost countless men. and the, the 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 chinese communist party sent their soldiers in without shoes and yeah, coats and died in the cold and they died of cold but somehow it became like a nationalist yeah. massive box office hit the, and, it's like look at us the government thinks that we are not humans yeah yeah but no but <laughs> it was celebrated. people loved it and it yeah. made a huge amount of money in yeah. china but it, it's because it's mandatory think about this retired people also all get free tickets to go and see it yep. So it makes this huge box office, and yeah. it's like a forced box office. It it's is. mandatory. They'll change tickets yeah. for other movies. Let's say Transformers comes out. They'll take a Transformers ticket. They'll just cross it out, and they'll write that they yeah, went to go see that's the happened, other yeah. yeah, they do that kind of stuff. But it's also because it's a nationalist holiday. <laughs> it's the, um, you know, it's the, the National Day holiday. Then everybody does patriotic stuff, and yeah, they're supposed to do this. Yeah. And it's like I said, in a lot of institutions, it's mandatory yeah. to go and see. You will get a ticket if you yeah. work at a company. Yeah. The company will buy you a ticket. The You're going to go see this. Yes. It, yeah. So everybody goes to see these nationalist films. Yeah. And that's why these movies do so well. And things like Wolf Warrior, all these like nationalist movies that's supposed to show China as being very powerful and militaristic and stuff, they do very well. And this was going to be one of those films. Yeah. So it was ready to roll, ready to go. It was supposed to be, uh, you know, released exactly at National Day. Yeah. And then like a few days before, it just kind of disappeared. Mm. Never got released. Yeah. So we're going to explain to you why, but let's first take a look at the, um, um, I, I don't know, what do you call them? The Eurogal, you know, the preview? Yeah, the trailer. Trailer. Yeah. yeah, that's what you call it. Okay, so let's take a quick look. I'll get us out of here. Can I also be here? Yeah. I mean, if you didn't hear it, here's some visual representation. Yeah, so... Like in the trailer <laughs> for your prop billion dollar propaganda movie, yeah. you had to steal Star Wars sound effects. Yeah, now we're going to show you more footage. Don't worry, we've got more footage of the... There were some extended trailers and stuff we're going to put in the background because we have to discuss it. But there's a specific scene I want to show you here, which is absolutely absurd. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. We've talked about this in the past. We did. But this this was... Remember the, the article in the Global Times yeah. showed this where they're like... They love, they're so proud of this. They're like, it shows the determination. Yeah. It shows how... Uh, you know, strong the the People's Liberation Air Force pilots are. Yeah, and they show the guy being cooked. Yeah, this literally, does literally cooked. This is bullshit. Yeah. Okay, this is not what happens. No. When you test a new car or an aircraft, they do they stress test them, and uh, like I said last time, by baking them to see when the rubber, like at what point the rubber start to melt and the the metal starts to warp and stuff, because it's important to know this data. Okay, so they bake a car or a plane or whatever, and then they also freeze them for the same effect. See when things start to crack and break. But you don't have a person inside of it when you do that. No, I don't know if they didn't get the memo or if they don't actually test for that. I don't think they, they know about it. They don't know the science behind it, because why would you do this? I truly don't know. Because there's no way you've... They're cooking a man. You don't bake a, a star man. star pilot. Yeah, you don't bake him. And then, You're ace pilot. And then you don't... And then you freeze. You, wait, that's, that's my favorite. Like, when you see the icicles all over the dude. This is a Nazi dude. experiment. Exactly. That's kind of... Let's get, where is that? I gotta see the frozen face. There we go. He's, I mean... He's getting... me so sleepy. <laughs> Why he's, are you freaking? He's got ice, <laughs> Dong ice Sawala. crystals all over. Yeah. <laughs> Dong Sawala. It is a yeah. Dong Sawala. Oh, yeah. We better get a Dong Sawala. It's in an oh, sorry. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, he's literally frozen with ice crystals on him. Yes. You're not supposed to put a man in there. So, and this is supposed to show how tough the... The People's Liberation Army. I, I would love to. Air Force are. Yeah, I would love to. Ho I would hope because yeah. we, we haven't seen the movie because it got, didn't get released, and we'll tell you why. Yeah. But I would love to think that the dialogue leading up to this is 
I don't get separated from my plane. <laughs> my my yeah, plane yeah. gets frozen, I get frozen, you know? Yeah, it's definitely not that though. It's no, just it's like, not. we're so tough. Yeah. What what a crock of shit. Can I just say that? Yeah. Anyway, um, you notice the Darth Vader sound by now. Why? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> yeah. It's so terrific, terrific. and this is this is great for China, like yes. top notch. But it's so, still so bad because you show so much nepotism and corruption even in the film industry because it's yeah. government related. Yeah, that stuff is just shit. It's just really shitty quality. Yeah. So here we're gonna play some extended trailers in the background. You can look at the CG of the planes. Okay. I mean, what is this Toy Story one? As somebody who plays, you know, DCS, Digital Combat Simulator. Yeah. The game looks better. Than this yeah. movie. Oh yeah. Way Especially better. the detail. Yeah. It's very poor. Um, all the CG that you see is incredibly poor. <laughs> Dong <Suwala>. Yeah, Dong <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Suwala is the other one. Yeah. Um, yeah, like he's the just if you also look at the all the details in the trailer, you can see that they've just taken every scene from Top Gun. Pretty yeah. much and adapted it. Oh, we'll see this in pretty much every movie that comes out of China. I'll show you some stuff that I pulled up. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just shameless yeah. to see such a high budget movie <clears throat> um, look so shitty. So what's the reason that they pulled it, by the way? Oh, yeah. So I got some quotes here. And this is, I think this is a key feature. I know people are talking about this right now. That's why we're covering it. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing is to understand why they would pull something that had... Eight hundred and seventy million dollars. Oh, so that was eight eight seventy million dollars for the battle at Lake Chongjing. Yeah, um, and this is going to potentially be like a billion dollar revenue movie. Right? Yeah, this was definitely they were planning. It. Oh, wait, wait, wait! I just oh, yeah. can I just point something out here. You see this? What you can see here is this. There the obviously it's like a hero's moment, and the the poor guy is stuck in the cockpit here, and he's got blood all over him. Mm -hmm. So he's got a little gash on his eye. Yeah. How is there blood on the top and all over his helmet? How is there blood all over his mask? That's, uh, it's the plane's blood. I mean, okay. I don't know, dude. Uh, uh, is, if this is a, even if this is like, okay, let's, let's just put it in this scenario. If this is a dual seater, I think it's a single seater plane anyway. Let's say it's a dual seater sure. and there's a pilot or someone in front that got shot and it splats over yeah. him. Okay, then maybe, but it's not though. No. Because look, the buddy pulling him out also has blood all over his mask yeah. and his helmet, but there's not a speck of blood on him. No, he's he's like super handsome and clean. He's what like is, just out of the shower. What's going on with these special <laughs> effects? I love the blood splatter. And and there's like chunks of bits of it's stuff. Like, it's like a, he had like a deep vein thrombosis clot. <laughs> it's like he blew his nose real hard <laughs> yeah. into the wind and he had like, yeah. you know, something wrong going on yeah. there, you know? Yeah. But just the, the um, sheer amount of like blood and jibs or whatever <laughs> like, jibs. what do you yeah. know all over this guy's helmet it's it's comical it's comical it is so it's, i want to read this yeah okay. so by the way when we say it's billions of dollars budget we're, we're including there's the planes like yeah. this is a huge soft power effort to to show off the planes in the air force right yeah of course all the flying scenes you see <laughs> are cg there's yeah. not a single no. shot and i looked through these trailers very carefully not a single shot of the planes flying that's real yes <laughs> They're not capable of doing that. That's why they keep ripping off like Top Gun for the news and stuff in China. Yeah, Giga Tremor said they forgot the wound CG. <laughs> yes, they forgot yeah. the wound. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, mm. um, this whole movie, by the way, is five G and AI. Yes. Just so yes, you guys yes. know. How brought to you by Huawei. Oh, dude, like this CG. I don't dude, know. Look if, at how bad this. Is. If you watch, just watch this flag. Okay, watch the flag, the Chinese flag. It's just so bad. It's real bad. It's like, yeah, you're slowing it down for me in post. Yeah. It's so when you look at the details, everything like the textures are so plain. It's not good, dude. It's like I mean, I, so think about how many millions of dollars were wasted on Baijiu and cigarettes to like P PLA officials and They stuff. could have played DCS yeah. and just like put a film grain over it and it would have looked better than this. Quite literally. Yeah. So, importantly, let yeah. me get back on track. Right. It says, uh, Born to Fly was officially scheduled for release on September 30th, the day before China's national day holiday, right? Yeah. Many an analysts were bullish on the temple's pros prospects of uh, following in the footsteps of Wolf Warrior 2, which made $870 million in 2017. 
Battle at Lake Changjin, which was in 2021, yep. made $902 million, right? Again, forced you know nationalism, ticket sales, mm-hmm. to become China's next proudly nationalistic military blockbuster. Mm-hmm. Word within the Beijing film industry, by the way, we know some people that uh, used to work in that. Oh, yes. Um, is that Born to Fly's producers were made to realize that their movie stunts and visual effects were far inferior to Top Gun Maverick, mm-hmm. which had come out in May, right? Yeah. And that the Chinese version risked ridicule in comparison, all of which would have been most unwelcome, even politically dangerous. And that's my favorite quote here. Yes. China deemed this movie as potentially politically dangerous because mm-hmm. for them, this is not a movie to generate income. This is not a movie to just be like, oh, we are, we're proud Chinese. This yeah. is a movie to be a political chess piece, to, be, to make people stand up and say, I am proud to be Chinese and yeah. I, we can defeat America. That's, That's what this is. Yeah, about. and it's look how much better and more powerful our jets are than American jets and stuff. Yeah, and it says, even politically dangerous, given that the two films are, in part, propagandistic displays of the United States and China's military strengths, some in China who have seen born who would have seen born to fly have said or have, have, have seen, seen born it. to fly have said that the movie disappointed the Chinese uh, disappointed the Chinese Air Force because of both its overall perceived shabbiness and its mistaken reference to China's proudly homemade J twenty as the fourth generation it's fifth generation fighter, what they rather call than it correctly a more advanced fifth generation yeah. plane of its kind. I mean, China has been really crafty with the um, propaganda it's done with its plane, like airplane stuff. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. In that they release like prototypes for like sixth gen stuff to mm-hmm. try to get propaganda out there in a knee jerk reaction to anything that the US does. Yeah. And again, China doesn't have a plan. It has a plan of people's yeah, liberation. Yeah, that's air, the only plan they air. have. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have a plan. No. And that's the issue with this is that they throw away disturbing amounts of money and, and then remove something, a huge propaganda piece, because they think, hey, maybe Chinese people will watch this and say we're weak. Yeah. That's all, that's all it is. Yeah. It's a huge political move. And Chinese people don't have freedom to enjoy what they you know, want to consume entertainment-wise. Yeah. So at the end of the day, there, some mm-hmm. higher-ups looked at Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. And then they watched this and they were like, this is shit. We can't show this. Lane Seawright has a good point. What's uh, that? Fifth gen fighter, 5G. <laughs> yes, right? there we go. Runs on 5G. 5G fighter. For yes, sure. that's 5G correct. Planes. Dude, I mean, it's it's mm. just shameful if you if you go through the the trailers and so on, you can see how they tried to emulate Top Gun so much. Uh, Coped, I think, had a great thing. Every scene has small dick energy. And no, <laughs> okay. they think about this because. Mm-hmm. When you need to make your movie just a huge middle finger to something that's already been made, something yeah. that's already a good movie and could be released in your country. It's yeah. just a nice movie and you can earn a ton of money. Yeah. Right? China can just say, yeah, we can show Top Gun. No, they have to make a like scene for scene bad copy of that. Yeah. It's really insecure. Yeah. You know? And that's what that means. It's super insecure. Yeah. And I think it comes off as that, and I think it might have been a good move for China if they're going to use this as a political pawn, like a political chess piece, to probably not air it because it could backfire. Oh, yeah. It could backfire. Because the nationalists, those are the ones you don't want to disappoint. Yeah. And if they saw this, they'd feel like cringe, you know, they'd feel ashamed of it. Yeah. Because it can't hold a candle to Top Gun. I love the Andrew Tate joke, by the way. That was good. From Copeland. That's what the quote was. Yeah. Yeah. what they've done is they've removed it. The only kind of official statement, other than that stuff which comes from insiders, is that they've uh, they they took it down to rework the you know the action scenes and stuff. Yeah. So they might still release it. Yes. Um, they may still release it, but it's going to be completely redone. Yeah, we'll see what they do with it. Yeah, um, it's still going to be bad. Yeah, it looks like a bad movie. The, the acting <laughs> and everything just looks terrible. But it doesn't need to be good. Look at Wolf Warrior <laughs> Two. Yeah. That's like one of the worst acted movies I've ever seen. And and that's top. Yeah. That's the toppest of the top, right? Toppest gun. <laughs> yeah. Just just this last scene. Look at the planes how they fly over the logo. Watch. That looks so bad. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, I wanted to uh Let's look talk at, about movies. Yeah, let's talk about movies. movies. Uh, yeah. So I have this theory that China can't become a global superpower until it becomes cool. Right. I think China's cool. I think Chinese people are cool. I think things in China are cool. But it's outward projection to the world, unfortunately, always has to go through the sieve 
yeah. of the Chinese government, right? Yeah. It's not that the Chinese people are allowed, they're not allowed to go out there and project themselves. Yes. Right? It has to go through this kind of filter. And it's it sucks because Chinese people are awesome. Creative people, like musicians we met, like people that yeah. really do stuff are not the ones that are put in the front. Well, you say, I'd say the majority of Chinese people aren't, and that's because they're not allowed to be. Yeah, but the I'm ones saying. that are, have yeah. they've got such an uphill battle. Yeah. In fact, my whole Stay Awesome China documentary was me going to the big cities to yes. try and find people that were going against the grain. And yeah. it's so difficult for them to do what they do. It is. It's so hard. And I'm saying, imagine yeah. that, that, that dam was released. Yeah. You'd have the most talented hardworking people that really want to experience something new and oh yeah and, and yeah you stuff. would you would you would actually create a, a, an environment where people like that could thrive yes. right now people it's like stifled. that you can't if you try to be creative in china you will get beat down and yeah, my point is there are creative people in china but they're never propelled to the front the yeah, front you don't see can't. them yeah. you don't see them we we see them when we live there but you don't see them on the international <laughs> stage and that's because Corruption, nepotism, all this kind of stuff puts the wrong people in the front. And that happens in the Chinese film industry as well. So I think China won't ever be a, a global soft power because a uh, soft power superpower, I should say, yeah. because they don't have anything cool to show. Yeah. Right. And that's because the wrong stuff gets put to the front. And well, I don't know. Like what we're about to show you is pretty cool. Yeah. Let's have a look. This is a, a, a horror movie, I guess. Horror action movie. Okay. Let's take a look. <laughs> Now the great thing about this, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. The the plot of this, because I watched this, right? Mm -hmm. The plot of this movie is that some people and a researcher and whatever go to this kind of uh island, tourist island, where they okay. get to see like some resurrected exotic reptiles. Sounds familiar to me. Sounds familiar. And then but then their bus crashes and you know, bad stuff happens to them, mm -hmm. right? And it turns out it's some horrific scientific experience. Have you you've heard of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's Jurassic Park. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's Jurassic, it's Jurassic Park. Park. Now this movie, on the other hand, wildly different. Let's have a look. Okay, let's take a look. And this one, this one was dubbed into English officially, officially because then. they wanted this Yoku TV to take off. So this is one of the the things they did. This movie. Let's take a look. <laughs> Let's run away. Jen, <laughs> it's great. Can you go back to that? I just want to hear that again. What? <laughs> Let's yeah, run away? The, it's, it's not a fan dub. This is official. This is. By the way, oh, can I say something? Yeah. This movie, what this is, because this one's different, right? Yeah. This movie is about a island, mm -hmm. right, where these tourists go. Yeah. And what happens is it turns out it's some experiment where they resurrect some reptiles. Yeah. And the reptiles are like really, really dangerous, but then their bus crashes <laughs> and then they actually have to it's fend the for same, themselves. It's the same it's movie. It's literally the it's same, the same movie, movie. But it's not the same. Yeah. It's a, yeah. And it's a, not a sequel. Mm -hmm. It's a different series of movies. <laughs> okay. I'm not joking. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look. Let's run away. <laughs> I just love that Jeff. quote. Let's turn it up so you can actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn it up. This a is little another bit. scene that I actually, I think I actually peed my pants almost. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. What's going on? It's great. Let's talk later. Well, one, two, one. Two. Well, he's not. Oh, the kid. I thought the kid was saying no, one, two, three. No, no, they're trying to push the bus. Okay. Two, yeah, let's three. See. One, two, three. Sir? One, two, three. Where's the washroom? There's no washroom. Let me take you to the woods. Can't you make it? Do you want me to help you? What the? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Jesus, you gotta warn me about this shit. What the? <laughs> <piss off. laughs> okay. Let me take you to the okay, world. Wait, let's... Let's uh. Can we see that whole yeah, scene again? Okay, sure. So the context here is that wow. the bus crashes in the dress. I mean, not the Snake Island. Yeah, or whatever Snake. The hell it's yeah, okay. And <laughs> everyone's trying to push the bus. Yeah, yeah. To get it unstuck. Yeah, yeah. 
Can't you? Little boy needs to pee. Yeah. So this man offers to take him to pee in the woods because yeah. the kid expects there to be a, a bathroom. Yeah. So, but he can't, right? Make he can't. It? So he, you'll see him. Do you want me to help you? Yeah. That's super <laughs> sus, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, that <laughs> his, is his that. look <laughs> he says like, it all. He's like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. You want me to help you? <laughs> like, so what does he do? Uh, so he whistles, and that's yeah. actually important. Yeah, yeah, that's a cultural thing. If you walk around in the yeah. parks or something in China, the grandmothers and grandfathers, they carry the kids around. And when they yeah. want the kid to pee, they whistle. Yes. And by the way, seeing a kid peeing in public is very common in yeah, China. It's, it's just everywhere. They'll just pee in a, in a flower pot or whatever, and they'll whistle. And they then the kid will pee. Yeah. yeah, so they can pee on command. Yeah. I remember there was a, a woman holding up a baby in, a, in front of an, it was an ashtray outside of Walmart. Yeah. Just peeing in there, whistling. That's the first time I saw that. I was like, I'm watching a woman hold a baby peeing in an ashtray outside of a Walmart in a mall while whistling at it. And mm-hmm. then I learned what it what it was. Yeah, they they uh they trained them to do it. But can we yeah. can we see the scene as a whole? Okay, oh because I'll that is just like I, I don't I don't know how to say this, but the peeing on the frog thing is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Well let's take what? a look. One, two. One, two, three, one. Two, three. Sir? One, two, three. Sir? Where's the washroom? There's no washroom. Let me take you to the woods. Can't you make it? Do you want me to help you? <laughs> Why? Oh, dude. Why does he piss on the frog? Why is it his gut instinct is to piss on the frog? Yeah. There's a frog there. May as well piss in it. And you know, the, the thing about China is, you know that they filmed a real frog rarely getting pissed on. There is no... you know, It's like, not fake piss. You know the 5G AI yeah, CG yeah. we just watched in the top uh, bottom gun? Yeah, yeah. That that was CG. Right? Yes, this, this is, young girl and beautiful. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That was not. That, no, was, that was real, real. piss from a real... Yeah. <laughs> really pissing on a really frog. Really pissing on a real life frog. You know that. That is it's so I know this unnecessary. Makes no sense. It's so unnecessary. <laughs> it's so unnecessary. But yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do we got over here? I just want to say, mm-hmm. I know it doesn't make any sense because it's not a sound, but I want that to be a sound bite. I'll see if reason. I can I can do some magic behind the scenes okay. here. Okay, but in the meantime, what's going on here? Uh, this is a movie where they got a token foreigner. I love when they get foreigners. Yeah. Um, non-Chinese people to be in movies because they're always not actors. Yeah. To be fair, usually a lot of the Chinese people are not actors either. They just throw together a movie. This one's about like sexy g- bad girls that like do heists or something. Okay. And they get the token foreigner to like broker a deal. Like okay. you give me the suitcase of money and I'll give you whatever, right? But there is no script here. Mm-hmm. It's There's no planning here. Okay. I just love this. Let's take a look. <laughs> the, <laughs> let me translate here. Yeah. The uh, his his Chinese, Chinese is, is great, great yeah. by the way. But he has to mix it in with the English because that's his role. He's supposed to be a foreigner, right? I, I'm commending him because they didn't give him shit to go off of. No. And he just it, he just like came up with something. Yeah, he really did. Like that was not script. There was no script there. And yeah. he goes like, <clears throat> he obviously was told like they they need to fight, right? Yeah. Like his guy and their guys need to fight, but they're they're not they don't have beef. No. He's like, I like Chinese kung fu. Yeah. And I like Chinese boxing. Like, how about my guy and your guy they fight? And he's like, okay, cool. What context is this? No context. Anyway, this is the quality that you can expect. <clears throat> oh yeah. Not the boxes. <laughs> yeah, not the boxes. It's kind of reminds me of this. 